Oh, November 12th, 2016. Finally had our first frost last night, and you can sure see it right there on the squash. It's had it. Day after Veterans Day. God bless our veterans. Um, I wanted to do a video on aluminum smelting because I need some aluminum ingots. I plan on I plan on uh, doing some sand casting. This here is a uh, window that fell out a few years back and it screwed it up so bad I can't use it again. I'm going to disassemble it. It'll go in the smelting pot. And then as always, um, save those cans. I'm going to recycle them. Got a heater core, aluminum heater core. I'm going to do it. So I'm going to show how I do it. And uh, from, I mean, the bare bones to the finished deal. It's really simple and, oh man, it's a beautiful day, cold air. And, uh, oh man, getting into fall. Yeah, there's some still some leaves. They won't be there for long now, for sure. Anyway, I'll show how I do it. I'm going to start from zero on this deal, which means I don't even have a mold. We're going to make one, a very simple one. I could use muffin pans or anything like that. Here's what I'm going to use. In this area, the soil is very sandy, so every time it rains, it washes down sand from the streets. And this is a really coarse sand, it's in the gutter. This is very coarse. Look a little further, and there's some finer sand. Come down here, there's a natural sluicing effect. This is the sand that I would really like to use right here. But there's not much of it at all. You can kind of see off of this lawn how it just washes out. This really fine powdery sand would make the best mold. And of course I'm going to have to sain it. So what we're going to have to do is sort of compromise on because we're not going to buy anything for this. I think right in here, the further down you get, the more coarse the sand is. There's plenty of it right here. The city's already got the really good sand that was right across over there. Now sweep this up. The street sweeper will come by and get this too if we don't go ahead and do this. So this is the first step. We're going to get some sand. We're going to saying it down to sort of a medium grit. Start by getting as much sand as you think you're going to need. You're going to need enough to fill a large terracotta pot. Okay, next I'm going to use this as something my grandmother made. Uh, sure, Miss Grandma. I'll tell you what, that she was a resourceful woman. <clears throat> this is probably an antique now. Old Dr. Pepper case, wooden case. And she put this uh, rabbit wire on it. Dr. Pepper Bottling Company. No telling how old this is. 
Anyway, she needed it for some similar purpose once upon a time, so that's what she made, and I've had it all these years. That's what I'm going to use to get the biggest debris out. We'll start with that. And here's some more scrap I've saved up. Found this along the highway. This too. I think I found that too on the highway. That's just some scrap that I had left over from a project. And I can't decide if I'm going to either try to fix this aluminum ladder or just scrap it and do the same thing with that because it took a bad. It's, it's really not safe. I, I probably should just go ahead and and this would add a lot of weight to my... We get more ingots. It's a little more work, but that's what we were put here for is to work, so... Anyway... Open up my Dr. Pepper, my Diet Dr. Pepper on a cold morning. Oh, refreshing. There's my setup. We're going to use that terracotta pot, and there's the sand. We're going to sand it once and see how it looks, and then we may sand it again, which with this screen from another broken window, which is much finer. Anyway, we'll try it once and see how it looks. Man, on a still morning like this, when those trains go by, the racket's awful. Anyway, so I have to wait till they get by. So the idea is, just take your sand, and we'll just, now look at that, we'll save these rocks for uh, drainage in our, when we pot our plants. Um, just keep going at it. That was uh, why my grandmother made this, is for this very reason. I don't know what she used it for, but it sure works good. Just break up those bigger clumps and then I'll put these pebbles in a separate, separate pot. Anyway, you get the idea. Talking about Grandma, she grew up in the Depression of the 1930s. Terrible, terrible time. And that's where she got her resourcefulness. And it changed her for life, it really did. And we're about to go through our own thing. And Lord only knows how bad it's gonna really be. But this type of thing, doing this type, this type of recycling, if you want to call it that. Oh man, it's going to be a must in the, in the, in the coming years. This is going to be, this is going to be a must. And just take the, there you go, like that. Uh, And of course it shaped a lot of people, the depression. And uh, changed the world. And it was, it's amazing to me. See, we definitely want to filter out things like glass. It's amazing to me we got so far from our self-reliant roots. Anyway, I'm going to completely fill that up, and, uh, and then we'll see if it needs to be sained again. Okay, there's the first run, and we do, we, we really need, th this is good sand for this project. But this is just, it's going to leave, when we, when we cast our ingots, it's going to leave some really, and it really doesn't matter, I mean, they're raw ingots. They're, they're going to be melted somewhere in the future for another purpose. But this, I really like it finer than this. So, this worked great. And what we'll do is we'll just simply use the other 
um, screen, much smaller, much smaller hole. This is great for this. I mean, it's absolutely great. I can see we're using that for a lot of things. We'll take this and at least say half of it. We'll, we'll, we'll resane where we got up probably half of a pot there. <clears throat> So that uh, so that that, that uh, the impressions will be you know, much finer, and it'll. I just like it a clean job, a nice neat. Uh, um, you know, you want to do things, whatever it is in life, you want to do it the best you can, not the least that you can. I mean, your your good judgment over time will make it easier, but you don't want to don't make it a habit of cutting corners. That's a very bad habit. So we'll keep going. Okay, this next step. Ah, let me adjust the camera. Nah, I think you can see pretty good. And we just go back the other way. Okay, remember when you used to do this as a kid to find the antlions? That was so cool. I thought it was almost magic. Man, look at that. Let's see. Uh, not that it would hurt anything, but these would leave lots of big impressions on our casting. Oh, I'll just save that too. Makes great uh, drainage in your pots. Now, one thing I really want to talk about just real quick is I'm not going to get into the metallurgy of you know aluminum. Uh, if you're going to do this, I just have one suggestion along those lines. Uh, if you're going to do, uh, if you can melt any kind of aluminum, smelt it, that is. If you're going to do alloy wheels, you know, old, bent, ruined alloy, aluminum alloy wheels, I would, I would do, I would keep that aluminum separate and make a note that it that that was what that metal was it was an alloy aluminum alloy another thing uh, is um, if you were to ever come across something kind of off the wall like uh, well anything that was structural for example uh, a sail a sailboat mast aluminum uh, aluminum off of anything that would you know use on a boat or something that is or a car that is a high strength item Whereas this kind of aluminum here off this window, this is what the uh, scrapyard's called. I can't remember, it's either junk or, or scrap aluminum. I think it's, they call it junk aluminum. It's just aluminum cans, uh, it, you know, non-structural aluminum. It's, that's sort of a no-brainer. You don't even have to worry about, you know, it, it, when you go to do a casting, because whatever your casting is going to be is probably not going to be anything structural. It's, in my case, it's going to be or, probably ornamental, an ornamental sand casting. It, do, it doesn't matter, but when you uh, smelt something that's uh, been had a, had a structural use, it's going to have more than just aluminum. Anyway, here another train coming, so that's it for the moment. Yeah, Grandma was uh, devoutly religious, and it's thanks to her, I don't make any bones about it, it's thanks to her that, and Mama, especially Mama, but Grandma and Mama, that I know God, I'm not going to sit here and preach, this, this channel's not about religion. I'm just saying, I'm making a statement. I thank God every day that I had Grandma and Mama in my life. And I hope that you can say the same thing. Anyway, let's have a look. Let me grab the camera and let's have a look. Oh, oh man, that's exactly what we need right there. Nice, 
really smooth, clean sand. That'd be great for sandblasting too. For, for sand castings, this is perfect. And I'll be honest, yesterday I went to town and uh, I uh, was planning on buying, stopping by the dollar store and buying a, a uh, muffin pan. Because it makes such nice, pretty, perfect, smooth, blah, blah, blah. Well, I forgot, and on the way home I remembered, and I said, well, I guess we're going to do plan B. Which is better anyway, because it's more free. And I sure ain't going to use one of my good muffin pans. Anyway, we'll stop there, and I'll set up the next step. By the way, you can see why it pays uh, to save things like this. This I won't. This I won't scrap. I won't. I won't put in the smelting pot because for just for this purpose, because it's all ready in you perfectly usable shape for some project like this again. And uh, uh, tell you what I'm going to do with this uh, stuff that I'm saying. Just on the outside chance, there might be an ant lion or two in there. I'm going to put them in my sandy driveway. That way uh, they can make another home. This is part of respecting nature and life in general. All right, we got our sand now. And I have to say, this has turned out beautifully. This is, uh, I'm, uh, the, the finer the better. This is a perfect grit. I put it at a, oh, I just had to guess, 120. Oh yeah. It's, it's just right for uh, casting ingots. And there's other uses that you could, uh, I mean in, black, in blacksmithing, there's, there's other uses for sand, a pot of sand like that. Anyway, Okay, so that's the first step. Now I'm going to get the aluminum ready by disassembling it and cutting it up into sizes that will go into the crucible. There is one other thing we need to do. Uh, while we're setting up for everything else, the sand is going to need to be wet. So we're just going to let that sit, soak in, and uh, while I set up everything else. Okay, when you're breaking down your aluminum, you've got to be sure and remove all of the steel and plastic. For example, uh, on this, you got these plastic pulls here. Got those, got to be taken out. You have metal screws. And in the case of this heater core, it is aluminum, but these. Uh, but these uh, retaining clips are metal and of course they're the same color. The easy way to find out is like I have a hobby magnet, a rare earth hobby magnet. And you see, it sticks to that, but yet it won't stick to any other part of this. Okay, so see? These got to go. Um, in the case of this ladder, these rubber feet, you got to take them off, get them out of there. Oh, there's a couple of other pieces of steel. Take that. These roofing nails. This is that was just a someone recycled this. I'd like to take credit for it, but can't even remember where I got this now. But. Uh, in the case of uh, this rain gutter, you know, it's a downspout to the rain gutter. We have metal screws. That's got to go. Be sure and inspect. You know, this like this. So this is aluminum. Where I got ran off. I picked this up on the highway, and when I was picking up cans, it had been chopped up by the mowers. Um, 
and just thoroughly inspect it. You know, I don't even know what this is. Looks like maybe an old fan blade or something. Make sure there's no steel and no plastic because that's uh, <clears throat> that's going to mess up our smelting process. Just take those out, cut it up into, uh, I'm going to cut it up into six, six, six inch, eight inch, uh, maybe, I don't, yeah, a foot long would be too long. It, anyway, six inches would be perfect. So you got to have good, clean, and all this, you need to be sure and clear all the trash out. Of course, with cans, these, uh, it's, you're probably okay on that. I can't imagine anything problem there. On, I, I do save cat food cans, and you really need to watch them because some are aluminum, some are steel. They're all the same size. Just make that, you know, use your trusty magnet if it won't pick it up. You're good to go. Okay, got the pile of scrap aluminum there. Got a variety of cans and just odds and ends ready to be smelted. Here's the reason we needed to uh, get that sand wet. We gotta break it up. And uh, just have it kind of moldable if you wanna use that term. Uh, there's only one <clears throat> really cost-effective way to do this. You can do it lots of ways. But the only really cost, truly cost-effective way is a coal forge right there. Not a gas forge, not actually acetylene torches, not map gas. Chemtain, anything else, any other way you do this is only going to cost you more and make it the diminishing returns that much quicker. And uh, since I, you know, I do blacksmithing anyway, have a supply of coal. Now, if you can't get it, I mean, if you got to do it some other way and you just the price is no object then knock yourself out but we're doing this the cheap way the poor man's way and uh, there's nothing to it anyway I'll get stuff set up here and then we'll start smelting okay what I'm gonna use for a crucible it's not really a crucible it's all made a large ladle okay and I'm going to use a small ladle for skimming the impurities off that float to the top. You'll be amazed at how many uh, aluminum cans it takes to even fill this. Uh, it it's takes so many. That's why most people don't do cans. Um, scrap aluminum ladders and stuff like that go a whole lot further. Anyway, um, there's a lot of different crucibles you can use, but this is going to be my setup on this particular project. Okay, now here's going to be our mold, what we use for a basic mold. Okay, this is a stainless steel butter dish from the food pro processing industry. I could use it to make the casting, but this is stainless steel and very expensive. So here's how we're going to do it. Let me zoom in a little. She stays in focus. The reason we wanted the loose sand is because we're going to make an impression with this. And this is going to be a good size for an ingot. Make a really firm impression. And in fact, we're gonna we're gonna kind of tap, do some tamping around it to so that we don't have sand fall in. Okay. 
okay, this is experimental, so we don't know exactly. We're just going to fill that up. We don't know how much it'll weigh exactly. We'll just take a guess, but we're just going to do that and see see what it makes. Okay, I'm going to get the forge going, and then we'll start. Yeah, the one downside to using coal is it sure does stink. This is a very good grade of coal, and it still smells like sulfur like you won't believe. I made that little bonnet for it so it helped carry the smoke up and not at least, you know, getting it going at first, and then I can take it off. That's how we get the, the coal forge going. All right, we got the ladle in there, and it's going to take a while for it to warm up. It's good thick steel, so we're going to let it get nice and hot. And don't forget to have your extinguisher close by, just in case. All right, you can't see it too well, but uh, we passed that 1200 degree mark. The uh, ladle's becoming incandescent, so we're melting aluminum now. It's hard to see in, in the, through all the flames. There you go, castings for your next project.